today is a miracle. Glory be to God forever. Uh, I, I want to give God the glory for the opportunity to come across my via, wherever you might be located in any part of the world. It's a rare privilege I do not take for granted. As a minister of the gospel, when God gives me this opportunity, I seize it with both hands. Thank God for this uh, 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 new uh, platform where we can broadcast and get to people at different parts of the world is something also I'm highly excited about. I believe you are enjoying your day. I believe things are coming together for you and members of your family in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For the next 30 minutes, I'm going to be sharing uh, with us on uh, from setback to set up. I started this series, I call it Midday Random Teachings. I started this series some time ago, uh, and I believe by the leadership of the Holy Spirit, I have a go-ahead from the Holy Spirit to still share on this series today, as the Spirit of God enables me in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I know you're at your working place. I'll, I'll, you just give me uh, a little of your time, and let's have fellowship together. Let's have get-together. Let's get to know one uh, ourselves and let's get to flow uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. So, so, so my, my topic is from setback to setup. There was this experience that Peter had with the Lord Jesus Christ as recorded in the book of uh, Luke chapter number 5 from verse 1 to 7. I, I, I want to be reading from the Bible, wherever you are, just listen. I know you are busy, you, know, you might be involved in one vocation one enterprise or the other so just listen glory be to the lamb of god so the book of luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 7 says and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him that's upon jesus to hear the word of he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. verse number two says and saw two sheep standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets Verse number three, and he answered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would trust that a little from the land, from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of a sheep. Verse number four, now when he had left speaking, he has finished uh, sharing, he has finished teaching. And the Bible says, he said unto Next for a drought. Verse number five says, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night. I don't know what you have been laboring at. I don't know what has been a challenge to you. I don't know what you have been going through. Master, we have toiled all the night, all the night, not in other words, all the fishing hour they had allocated to them through the night. They have labored, they have worked. They have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. In other words, we didn't get anything from this aspect, uh, adventure. I have taken nothing. Hmm. Nevertheless, I, I like you to mark that when you have time, you read your Bible. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. That's verse number six. Verse number seven now, which is the conclusion where I want to uh, round up for this passage of scripture I'm reading. And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other sheep that they should, that they should come and help them. Isn't that amazing? From nothing to something, from, to multitude, from nothing to abundance. You know, you know. And they came and feed both the ships so that they began to sink. Glory be to God. What a miraculous encounter these people had with the Lord Jesus Christ. A glorious one, a wonderful one. And when you read, read it, listen to the story, I recap it time and time again. But for the sake of those who are watching for this first time, I, I like to quickly go over it. Peter, uh, uh, as it were, and some other fishermen went to uh, uh, the lake called Lake Gennesaret to fish through the night. Like their usual custom words. They always go there from time to time to fish and so on and so forth. But this particular night, they didn't catch any fish. There was nothing to show for all the effort. There was nothing to show for all the planning, the arrangement, 
a pursuit, nothing to show at the end of the day. So it's like the Bible tells us in, the, in all labor there is profit, but in this case, they didn't get anything in form of return, in form of profit. There was nothing they got. Isn't that amazing? And they had finished, so they ended up uh, early in the morning, tried to wash their boat and wash their net. They were all busy at the, sea, at the seashore, trying to put their fishing uh, materials together and their fishing uh, equipment as it were. It was in, at that instant that Jesus stepped in, uh, into the seashore. Can you imagine that kind of a thing? It's amazing. Uh, I, 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 that's why I, I call it from, from set back to set up. They were back to, you know, with, you know, for them to have walked throughout the whole night without catching anything. It's going to be something ugly. It's going to be something not exciting. It's going to be something not beautiful. You know, they were getting ready. They were getting ready, you know, to go back home to go, you know, to meet maybe their the family members to let them know, oh, unfortunately, this night there's nothing that had come in, you know. Those people live on daily basis. Whatever they get is what they eat. It wasn't, in other words, it wasn't a good experience. But thankfully, Jesus Christ was at the seashore when they were washing their nets. And it was when Jesus saw Peter, because Jesus had an inkling. Jesus knew plans ahead because Jesus was, was God in human form. Jesus was full representative of God, the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son. God the Holy Ghost. He saw ahead of time. He knew what he was going to do with Peter. This was a, a, a glorious opportunity for him to get in touch with Peter because of assignment ahead. Glory be to the Lamb of God. And he told Peter, can I use, you know, trust your boat into, into the water, you know, launch it, pull it inside. I, I want to use your boat to minister. You know, uh, when you sit inside the water, there's an echo that is produced. So Jesus took advantage of that as it, as it were, technology. Because there were multitudes, thousands of people were gathered to hear Jesus Christ. Many were getting healed, many were getting delivered, many were getting free. The word of God was being taught and many were excited about the presence of Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ needed to amplify his voice for more people to hear what he was talking about. So as it were, borrow Peter's net. And after his finished ministry, the Bible tells us, he told Peter, it's time to launch into the deep. You know, I know you have toiled all night. No, no, no. Hear me. And then Peter reminded Jesus Christ, for adventure, you don't know. We have toiled all night. We couldn't catch anything. That is, it's in the night. Fishermen really could get whatever they are looking for. You know, get a, a lot of fish and so on and so forth in the water. And in the daytime, most of the fish would always have a place to hide. They hardly would show up. And Peter said, we toiled all night. We couldn't catch anything. How come you are telling me to? You know, trust my boat into the deep right now. When it is daytime, the fishes are nowhere to be found at this time of, of the day. But he didn't know he was face to face with the master. He was face to face with the Lord, the master, the owner of the world, the owner of the ocean, the owner of the sea, the owner of the fish, you know, that he was looking for in the midst of the water. He said, nevertheless, I don't know why he spoke that way. Maybe. He had an inkling of who he was talking to. Nevertheless, I die word. Because you are the one saying it, I'm going to obey you this time around. That was how Peter, you know, released his net into the deep. And the Bible told us he began, you know, the net, as it were, began to catch fishes. And Peter to beckon some of other fishermen were at the seashore, you know, to come and help him. Partnership. Now, what am I talking about? That, that is a kind of review of what really happened. All the preparations he went, you know, number one was like a waste, waste as far as Peter was concerned. He has prepared to, you know, to could, couldn't get anything, you know, and early in the morning he had to put his thing together because he was to go back to his family with nothing to show for the day. And that was when Jesus showed up. Let me let you know, sometimes God may choose to show his power in our failure. He, may, he might choose to show you know, his power manifests his power when you are at your wit end, when nothing seems to be working in your life. Haven't you got a sudden miracle when you were at the low ebb of your life? Have you seems to receive a phone call that changed the course of your life when your life was desperate, when things 
were not working for you, when your life was at like a bus stop, nothing was just working, nothing was, you could not get anything. Haven't you gone through that before? I'd like to assure you that same God is going to move in your situation again. Maybe you're at your wit end. Maybe things are not working out the way you expect it to be. But let me assure you, that is when many a times God will show up. Like in the case of Peter, you have planned, you have organized, you have arranged, and, 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 and arranged step by step where you can get more out of your business. And it's like there is nothing to show for all your effort. But I can assure you by the power of the Holy Ghost, miracle, the miracle working part of God is going to get involved in your business and begin to turn things around, begin to turn things around. The miracle working part of God is going to get involved in that, your, your family, and begin to change things and begin to turn your children back to God and begin to give them, the, you know, a change of heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We also see, we see also that you're set back, you know, as opportunity to learn and not a failure. Many a times when we Things seem not to work, be working for us. We just see it as failure. You know, we, we give it a name. We give it a tag. But hear me, child of God, if you walk in the spirit, you'll be able to understand when things doesn't seem to be working well in your life, it's an opportunity for you to learn more. It's an opportunity for you to go into, you know, uh, uh, self-examination. It's an opportunity to, for you to find out why are things the way they appear to be. Are there things I could do on my own to change things again, to make sure things begin to work well for me? Are you getting what I'm talking about? See your setback as opportunity for a comeback. Don't see it as uh, the final. Don't see it as the conclusion of the matter. Uh, many persons, when you read their biography or autobiography, you will hear stories of catalog of woes, failures they have gone through before the rose to prominence, before the rose and be, and became the, the important personality, the VIP we, we hear about today. Either in the secular world, world or in the Church of Jesus Christ, you're going to see all kinds of personality who have gone through all kinds of challenges, but they surmounted them. And today, they are being venerated. Today, they are being celebrated. Today, they are called celebrity. Your name is going to be added to it. I see God help you to overcome the obstacle. I see God help you to triumph over the obstacle. I see God making the way for you where there appears to be no way. I see God connecting you with men and women that will make your life to run better than the way it's running right now. I see God moving upon your life and bringing changes that will cause you to celebrate and dance without physical music. You know what it means? There are certain miracles that happen in your life, whether you like it or not, you won't know when you begin to engage your leg and begin to dance. You just form a kind of music in your in, in your head that you'll be dancing to. People will see you dancing, they wonder why is this person dancing? Is something wrong with him? Nothing's wrong with him. Everything's right with him. Why is dancing? It's because a miracle has just happened. And I prophesy and decree and declare by faith that miracle will locate you now, like he located Peter. Peter was at his wit end, his business was failing. But here was the master. Hear me. In whatever situation you might have found yourself right now, be rest assured that the Lord Jesus Christ is with you right now. He said, I will never leave you. Neither will I forsake you. I know sometimes when we say this thing look too simplistic, but that is the truth of the word of God. I will never leave you. Neither will I forsake you. That's what he told us. And if God said he will never leave you, you better be rest assured he will never leave you. And you better be rest assured that whatever that is happening right now, God is aware of it all. Nothing is passing without him noticing everything. Because the Bible says his eyes travel to and fro. He sees things. He sees everything. There's nothing hidden in the sight of God. Glory be to God. Yo, there's a tongue coming for your life. And it's a tongue for you to not celebrate. And it's a tongue for you to not testify. It's a tongue for you to not glorify the name of the almighty God. I see God causing you to rejoice. So whenever you experience a setback, Always know that God is not true with you yet. Can you tell yourself, touch your chest by faith? Say, I know God is not true with me yet. Would you say it loud and clear? I know God is not true with me yet. It's possible men might have given up on you. It's possible your best friends have thrown the tar. They have left you alone. They believe you are, it's, you, it's over with you. But I like to let you know when your mother and your father, and your best of friend forsakes you, the rest assured, God has promised, I will never leave you, neither 
will I forsake you. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So your setback is an opportunity for a setup. And you also need to recognize there is really no setback when Jesus is in the picture. <laughs> Glory be to God. When Jesus is in the picture, there is no really setback. Because Jesus has a way of turning our setback into a setup for major miracle. Turning our setback into a major setup for major testimony. And he can do the same for you right now. Peter, <laughs> as it were, had failed. But that was when God appeared. Peter, as, as it were, <laughs> had thrown in the toy. That was when God appeared. Appeared. I don't know about you. Wherever you find yourself right now, maybe you are like Peter. You have thrown in the toy. You are tired. You are wondering what is going on. But that is when God would decide to step in. I see God stepping into your, into your situation and changing them, changing them. Because when he steps in, the devil must step out. When the healing powers of God step in, sickness must step out. When, <laughs> when breakthrough step in, breakdown must step out. When testimony step in, all the trial and testing must give way. When light step in, darkness must give way. I see God stepping in right now. And the moment God steps into your situation, you know the devil of necessity and all his cohorts, they will step out of your life. I see them stepping out of your life. I see poverty stepping out of your life because prosperity is setting in. I see success step into your life and I see failure stepping out right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I feel some twinkling of an anointing right now. I feel the grace of God. I feel the glory of God. I feel joy for somebody here. Something good is coming for you that's going to make you excited. Something good is coming for you that's going to make you testify. Something beautiful is en route for you. I see a financial miracle. Coming for somebody who's watching me by the midst of this telecast. I see a financial breakthrough. Coming for you that will cause you to, to celebrate like you've never done in recent past. I see God doing something for you that will cause you to be amazed. That will cause you to wonder. That will make you wonder and ask yourself, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? That God will get to this level to begin to do things like this in my life. Who am I? I know you have gotten to a stage in your life you think nothing good can happen. But I can assure you as a servant of God, as I speak by the leadership of the Holy Ghost, something good is coming. Something good is coming. Something good is coming. It's time for good news. It's time for good report. I know you have gone through waiting. I know you have gone through times of trial. I know you have gone through times of great difficulties and hardship, but I can ass uh, assure you that the next chapter is going to be better. <laughs> Glory. The next chapter is going to be better. And it's opening up any moment from now. The next chapter of your life is going to be better. The next chapter of your family is going to be better. I know, you know, the Bible says, weeping me endure for the night. Oh God, I didn't plan to preach. Weeping me endure for the night. But joy comes in the morning. I don't know whether you have been crying. I don't know whether you have got into a level you are sighing. Say, Lord, what kind of life is this? But wait a moment. God has a miracle with your name written on it and is connecting with you any moment from now. A miracle with your name written on it. I don't know. I just sense that in my spirit right now. By the leadership of Holy Ghost. I saw somebody who's watching me by the means of this broadcast. I, I, I sense in my spirit a miracle with your name written on it. It's connecting with you any moment from now. It's connecting with you any moment from now. A miracle with your name written on it. It's locating you wherever you might be found right now because God knows your name. God knows your house address. God knows the number of hair on your head. And God knows the size of shoes you wear. I am assuring you of that. And this same God is connecting with you right now because no accident you're watching this broadcast. It's no accident you're watching this telecast. It's because the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. God decided to order your step towards this page right now so that you can watch this thing and get messages of encouragement and assurance from the Almighty God. Let me let you know, as I hear from God, I prophesy. He said, I've never left you and I will never leave you. Be rest assured that yet, there will yet be blessings for you. There will yet be breakthrough for you. There will yet be blessing for you. There will yet makule zampra no kola zenta. Hey, I told you, recognize there is really no setback when Jesus is in the picture. Because the moment Jesus comes in, every setback will become a setup. <laughs> Glory be to God. Every setback. When the devil throws stone at, at Job and, and destroys everything, 
in the life of Job and his family. He didn't know it was, it was his setup. <laughs> Job, uh, the, the Bible tells us in Job chapter 42, verse number 10, that the later end of Job was greater than his beginning thereof. Hey, Kando Zapalaya. When the enemy move against you, you wouldn't know that it's a setup for your life to be reorganized for better performances. Bless. I, I know you might have failed. No, nobody will say he has never failed one. I know you might have gone through some moments of trial and difficulties. Nobody will say, tell you he has never seen that. But I'd like to assure you, <laughs> this time around, is a brand new chapter that is opening for you. Another thing I'd like to quickly let you know, as we look at this verse of scripture, because I'll soon be rounding up, is you need to try again. When Jesus appeared, it was time for Peter to try again. But you know, that's where many people uh, miss it. The time they need to try again, they have given up. Listen to me. You don't fail until you have given up. You don't fail until you have stopped trying. <laughs> Success is made for those who are persistent, who recognize their failure, but they refuse to accept failure as the final verdict. They decide to keep going. They decide to keep doing what they are doing. Do you know life is not the absence of fear? Uh, boldness is ability to do what you need in spite of how you feel, in spite of your fear. That is where boldness comes from. Everybody entertains fear or concern from time to time. But ability to do what you need to do in spite of how you feel is what places you over in life. Glory be to God. I want to believe somebody's watching and, and, and there's this nugget that God is bringing out of my mouth that is made to facilitate a new move of God in your life. That's designed to, to set you up. Mikatoza, Mikaloza, Jemutata. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Try again. <laughs> Tell yourself, I'm going to try again. Like the Bible tells us, David dreamt again. Uh, Joseph, rather, Joseph dreamt another dream. The first dream, his father and his brethren were jealous. And he went back and dreamt another one. It's time to try again. Don't ever give up when you are face to face with apparent failure. Don't ever give up. Keep trying. Keep trying. Don't ever stop trying. Don't let discouragement, don't let what the cacophony of voices we hear, like blind Bartimaeus, when Jesus Christ was passing. And this man has been blind right from the time he was born. Jesus Christ was passing on Jericho Road, and that was when blind Bartimaeus on, on that same road begging. The moment he heard the voice of Jesus and heard the thronging of the multitude and the crowd that was following Jesus, he began to cry, Jesus, that son of David, have mercy on me. And he began to shout, and he began to pray, and he began to shout. And the disciples of Jesus told him, shut up. <laughs> there are many people who will tell you to shut up when you want to excel. There are many people who want you to shut up. Now listen to me. There are people who want you to be as big as they are. You better know that. There are people who want you to fulfill your potential in life. There are people who will not want you to be who God has created you to be. Whether you like it or not. They might be a mix your friend. They might be in your family. They might be your among Christian brethren. They might be anybody. They don't want you to be better. They don't want your life to appreciate. They are always human beings like that. Among the disciples of Jesus, one of them told blind by tomorrow, shut up. You read that in the book of Mark chapter 10. Shut up. <laughs> but the Bible tells us, blind by Timaeus cried. He shouted the more. If you want to be heard, you must be speaking. God does not like quiet Christians. <laughs> a short mouth is a short destiny. You must know how to talk. You must know how to speak up. When you are praying, you don't pray within. You pray out. You pray out. Tell the devil, I'm still here. I'm not dead yet. I'm still here. I'm still making progress. God is still in my life. God is still helping me. Try again. There is a great power in persistency. When you learn how to persist, you will never be defeated. Do you know many people who rise to be great achievers in life? There are men and women who refuse to be down when they are supposed to have fallen. They refuse to be down until they ended up at the peak of they are choosing career. They refuse to give up. They refuse to train the toy. It may amaze you. <laughs> it may amaze you. Thomas Edison is one of the greatest inventors in our generation. He only has three months of formal education. And he ended up becoming one of the best and the greatest inventor in our generation. That's to let you know you have no reason to fail. 
<laughs> Glory be to God. You have no reason to fear. God has created you to excel. God has created you to succeed. God has created you to prosper. Don't listen to those people who tell you they talk about money, money, money in church. Money is important. Don't let people deceive you. Everybody wants money. Everybody crave for money. What is wrong with talking about money? For you to be successful, you need money. In fact, you can't be called a success if you have no money. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Don't ever give up, no matter the circumstances in your life. Refuse to, uh, uh, to give up. Like that person said, no retreat, no surrender. Lay your hands on the plow. Say, I must get to the top. Lay your hands to the plow. Say, whatever is making me to miss this thing, there's something I'm missing. You see them to restore it. You see them to find out. You see them to pray. You see them to fast. You don't leave it to the game of chance. See, it didn't work and didn't work. Now listen, most of the invention we have today, there were times they said it couldn't be possible. There were times people have sat and they said, nobody can go to the moon. But you and I know people are going to the moon today. Is it not true? Somebody said many years ago, a time will come, your television will be like at the palm of your hand. Today, your little phone that you use, it has a TV. You can broadcast. I'm broadcasting right now. I'm broadcasting right now. And somebody believe that this thing is possible. You are not out until you decide to be out. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Do whatever Jesus tells you to do. You go to God in prayer whenever you are going through discouragement, whenever you are going through, uh, do I call it failure, whenever it appears as if you have failed, that is the time to go back to God in prayer. Some people, that is the time to give up and say, I don't want to follow God anymore. I'm tired of this Christianity. I have tried and tried. It's not working. Some people even said, I've been praying and praying. God is not hearing me. Uh, you are still alive. God, that shows God has been hearing you. The Father, you are still alive to pray. Shows God is on your case. And he might be walking behind the scene. And one day, a miracle will happen. You wouldn't, be, you wouldn't be able to trace it to the amount of prayer you have prayed before that time. You know, sometimes the Bible tells us, you know, the Bible tells us when the Lord shall turn again, the captivity of Zion. <laughs> Glory be to God. He said we were like them that dream. <laughs> when God brings miracle, he always appears to whoever experiences it as if it's a form of dream. <laughs> Glory be to God. And I see that coming to your life. I see God bringing a miracle that will make you appear as if you have dreamt a dream. I see God bringing a signs and a wonders into your life. I see this year, the remaining months of this year, turning out uh, to be miracle month for you. I hear that to have you wept. He that to have you been sad. You have gone through a night of weeping, of difficulties. <laughs> but let me let you know, joy coming in the morning. It's time to rejoice because your miracle is now. Glory be to God. I only have 30 minutes by the permission of um, TikTok to broadcast. And, and I'm so grateful for some of you decide to be a part of this powerful, uh, this is one of my first major broadcasts here. You know, the Lord bless you, cause his face to shine on you and ensure that which you have heard produce your needed miracle. I pray for you that every day for you will be a miracle. Every week for you will be a miracle. Every month for you will be a miracle. Every new year of your life shall be better and greater than the previous year. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving me your time. My name once again is Apostle Siva Edanis. By the grace of God, I'm the presiding pastor. The presiding pastor of our love of flame ministries, also known as the Champions Chapel, situated at kilometer 20, Navy Gate, Okoko Michael, Badagri, Expressway, Okoko Michael, right here in a joint local government area of Lagos State, Nigeria. West Africa, Africa. Thank you, thank you, thank you for keeping it a date with me. If you have a way of sharing this, I'm just test running this thing. I really don't know how this TikTok work yet, but we're just looking for opportunity to share the gospel, to encourage people. God has given me the ministry of uh, bringing hope, bringing encouragement, bringing partition, bringing inspiration, and bringing transformation, change into the life of man. And I will do all, everything I can to do that, everything I can do to, to ensure I carry that out whenever I see the opportunity. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much. Remember that every day is a miracle and it can only get better in your life because your worst days are over already. I love you. Bye for now. Amen. Where do they offer it? Glory be to God.
I got to know how this thing works. <laughs> Let me see. What the question line? Let me see how this thing could be off. They help me. I don't know. All right. <laughs> okay, fine. Let me show your feet. <laughs> 